first teach you how to make your own pepper moth at school or at home. It's pretty easy. All you need is a piece of quite thick absorbent paper, which we're going to cut into a moth shape, a pipe cleaner, two paper clips and some real salt and pepper. Let's start by gathering all the things you need. First cut out your paper moth. And then find some black paint or black ink, you need a small amount, a little bit of water, a little bit of table salt, a grinding of real pepper, a paintbrush, any kind of paintbrush will do, a small section of pipe cleaner and two paper clips. Now it's time to get started. I'm just going to show you a trick if you don't want to use paint. You can easily make a speckled freckled moth effect by using an actual crayon or charcoal pencil on its side to cover over the wings. And then you can add some of the other patterns that you see on the peppered moth. So this is the quick and less messy way to create your own salt and pepper moth. And the harder you press and the more charcoal you use, the darker the wings will be. But I'm also going to show you a way to create the salt and pepper moth that looks like the ones in the book that Daniel has drawn. First of all, take some water and paint water all over the wings of your moth. This is just plain water, so it's hard to see unless it's gleaming in the light. If I pick it up, you can probably see water there and um, while it's still wet get your black paint or ink I've just got some watercolor paint here with a little water in it and just blob some blobs of paint anywhere you like on the wings you don't need to be particularly careful or try and create a pattern just put them wherever you'd like to put them now get some salt and sprinkle some salt on and around each blob and you'll see that the paint starts to form amazing patterns just like the peppered moths in the book. So if you leave it for a few minutes it'll just do the work all on its own creating these beautiful patterns for you. Now I'm going to add to this with some pepper, I'm going to use some real pepper, grind it over the top of my moth and create an even more beautiful speckled effect. And what happens that as the water dries with the salt in it, it also makes the pepper stick to the paper. So have a look at it when it's dry. I'm going to clear up now and show you the next step. Now my painted peppered moth is drying at the moment so I'm going to use the one I made with crayons to show you how to turn this paper moth into a magical, balancing, gravity defying moth. This is where you're going to use your pipe cleaners and your paper clips. Now first of all we need to make two cuts at the top of the wings just very small cuts, about half a centimetre each, around its head. So I'm just going to mark those with my crayon to show you where I've cut. Now take your very short piece of pipe cleaner and your two paper clips and bend your pipe cleaner into a sort of U shape or a V shape. Pick up your moth and put half of the V shape into each of the slots you made and then you can squeeze them together and bend them over to make some beautiful feathered antennae like the ones we looked at earlier. Now if I try balancing this moth with my finger it's just falling off isn't it but there's something very clever we can do. We can put a paper clip on each wingtip just slide it on and that allows the moth to balance on anything you try to balance it on because it changes the centre of gravity for the moth. It puts the centre of gravity right at the tip of its nose so that it will easily balance. So have a go at balancing it in interesting places. You can use, make, make lots of these moths, use them to decorate your room or classroom. You can balance them on your finger 
or even if you get really good the tip of a pen or even on your own nose see how good you can get <laughs>